My name's Emma and I'm going to talk to you today about stem cells and hopefully um, give you a bit more insight into them in a bit more detail. <clears throat> We've heard a lot about gene therapy and stem cell therapy today. So um, as Professor Bainbridge um, explained, gene therapy might be um, amenable to certain conditions. If you've got the cells there but your genes aren't working, then that might be a great approach. But if the cells are lost or they're dysfunctional and dying, then unfortunately gene therapy isn't going to be able to correct them and maybe we need to look towards stem cell therapy. And so really it's replacing cells, that's the idea. Um, in the eye itself, cells don't tend to regenerate, they can't regrow themselves in the adult, so that's why we need to replace them. So that's a bit why stem cell therapy is, is of interest. Um, sorry, that's it. Yeah. And uh, what really is a stem cell? So we've heard cells, they're the building blocks of our tissues, so we're basically lots and lots of cells. Um, and a stem cell is a special type of cell, really. It has to fulfill two criteria. So it has to be able to just grow and grow and grow as it is unspecialized, just this stem cell. Um, and, and that's quite an important feature. But also, given the right conditions um, to the cell, it can also become lots of different types of cells. And when I say different types, I mean different specializations of cells. So as in the cells on your skin versus the cells in your blood, they look very different and they're very different types of cells. So stem cells have to be able to produce um, different cells. And probably the best stem cell, the original stem cell, is the embryonic stem cell. So we all start off as a little cluster of embryonic stem cells, which gives rise to the embryo and um, the, eventually the adult and all the tissues within your body. Um, so they are the best. They're able to expand and grow indefinitely. So in the lab, if we have an embryonic stem cell, um, it can grow and grow and grow. We can keep that line for many, many years. Um, and around the world, there are banks of stem cells, so researchers can use the same lines um, in their studies. And they're also very good. They can produce any cell type in the body. Um, so it is important, though, to know you have to direct them to do that. So we need to provide kind of the conditions to promote them to form different cell types. Um, and I'm just going to touch on my talks, mostly going to focus on these embryonic stem cells. There are other types of stem cells. There are adult stem cells you'll find within your body, such as um, in your hair, in the hair follicle. There's a little niche or little pocket of stem cells, and that keeps your hair growing. Um, over time. So there are small populations in the adult, but these tend to be quite restricted in what cell types they can produce. So with the hair, for example, they produce the different cells that make your hair, but they can't then necessarily go on and form um, blood cells and bone cells um, where they are um, in the body. And you wouldn't want that, I'm sure. Um, and finally, um, there's also a new type of kind of adult stem cell are called an induced pluripotent stem cell. And this is almost like an artificial um, embryonic stem cell. We take tissue from an adult, so skin or blood, and we can kind of reprogram it, so turn it back into its original state as an embryonic stem cell, and then use these cells in the lab. And I'll explain that in a little bit more detail further on in my talk. So that's stem cells, but what about stem cells for treating eye disease? Well. Stem cell therapy, you would think, okay, it's the stem cells that, that are doing the job, but actually we need to make the stem cells form the cells that are needed. So in terms of um, eye diseases, some cells that could go wrong, this retinal pigment epithelium at the back of the eye, the support cells, um, you may have dysfunction in those, and those are not producing um, the proteins and the end products that are needed to um, keep your vision. Um, or it might be more the neural retinal cells, so these cells are more the circuitry of the eye um, at the back that converts the light into a neural impulse, which then gets sent to the brain. So stem cell therapy, it's all about the stem cells because these cells can generate all these cell types, but actually the cells we're going to be putting back need to be the specific cells that aren't working in the eye. And this may be um, a combination of these as well. So how would a, a stem cell therapy look like? Well. We'd get the embryonic stem cells, we'd grow them into the cell type that would be needed. So say the light sensitive cell or the support cell. And then these cells would need to be selected because we'd want just these cells. And we'd then transplant them back into the eye. It all sounds so simple, but it, it, it doesn't um, always go like that. Um, 
So with the retinal spells especially, you've got the light-sensitive photoreceptors, but you've also got many other kind of neural uh, retinal cell types. And really we want to just select that population. So you've got the whole issue of selection with the pigment epithelial cells. They grow in nice patches. Pigmentation, you can see the picture there on, uh, yes, be your left. Um, and those are quite easy to spot in the dish, whereas the photoreceptors aren't. Um, so there's these different... Um, steps we need to go through to really get um, to a therapy. And obviously then it's engrafting those cells into the eye, how we can do that. We need to put them back into the place where they would normally reside. And in terms of the light sensitive photoreceptors, this is within the neural circuitry. So they've actually got to go into your existing circuitry and form connections so that they could then input light signals to the brain. Um, so that's how stem cell therapy would work um, in theory. So where are we at the moment with stem cell therapy? Well, stem cells were discovered, as it were, to be able to grow them in the lab in 1998, which in scientific terms isn't that long ago. Um, and then, as I said, we need to identify the conditions to grow the cells we need, and this takes a lot of time in the lab. So in 2004, we started to identify how our PE cells could be grown. Um, and then this was taken on, um, how they could be transplanted and selected. And in 2010, the regulators approved um, their use to take into kind of first safety clinical trials, um, which was with um, a Carter Therapeutics um, and headed in the UK by Professor Bainbridge. And since then, there has been more recently another um, study using, again, the retinal support cells, those RP cells, um, in the UK by um, another group, and also in the States, there's ongoing cl clinical trials, and there's also one in Japan. So there's only a handful at the moment, and these are all just starting out. Um, I will mention again then the light sensitive photoreceptors. Where are we with those? Like I said, we need to get the cell type that needs to be replaced. So that's really still in the lab. We're still learning how we can generate those cells. So I think we made an improvement in 2012. There was a published paper. We could efficiently grow these cells, but we're still testing, are they functional? And how can we transplant them so they can engraft into the tissue and actually give some functional improvement? So that is a little way off. We're not looking at clinical trials for that type of stem cell therapy, but it's ongoing. There's lots of work going on around the world trying to move that forward. So <clears throat> because stem cells have the possibility to produce any cell type, they've been classed as this cure for all, um, not just in the eye, but for the whole body. Um, but they do have limitations. And as I um, said so previously, this really comes down to producing the cell that's needed. Um, and that's quite difficult to do. Um, it's taken many years to get light-sensitive photoreceptors, but there's still lots of other cell types around the body that people haven't been able to grow. Um, so this is an ongoing process, and more and more research is going into this. It's also very early days for stem cell therapy as a field as a whole. Um, I discovered in 1998, but the eye is really one of the first areas where stem cell therapy is reaching those first clinical um, safety trials. So other areas of the body still are in the research stage. So really it's at the cutting edge, which is why everything is, is so um, orientated towards safety and just learning what we can from these cells. It also might not be a useful approach for, for all retinal degenerations. Gene therapy might be better for some, so it, is, it isn't going to be applicable to everyone. And then finally, I just want to touch on other uses for stem cells, which may not um, have been apparent or you may not know about. Um, so in 2006, um, Mufeshi Yamanaka discovered that you could basically reprogram adult cells to turn them back into embryonic stem cells. Um, and he was awarded um, with John Gurdon the Nobel Prize in 2012 for this. Um, so let's just try to break it down. So you take a skin biopsy or a blood sample, you take that back to the lab, you grow those cells, and then actually using viral vectors that have been used for gene therapy, um, we reprogram those cells with a certain set of genes, basically like a little instruction code for them to revert back. Um, there's also been developments now of doing this um, using other methods, but essentially we'd then grow a population of embryonic stem cells in the lab, which would be specific to that patient, so they would have their genetic code in them. Now, this is obviously good for um, uh, therapy purposes in terms of rejection, so we're talking about cells Basically, it's 
identical to your own body that you could transplant black in um, so you wouldn't have to worry necessarily about rejection and things like that. But also they have a great strength in terms of research, um, especially for diseases uh, where we don't know the genetic causes, complex diseases like AMD. Those cells have all those um, that genetic code and can therefore inform our research. So we could grow those cells into retinal cells and we can test on those cells new drugs, we can test viral vectors and it gives us a really powerful tool um, to basically model disease in a dish and hopefully um, increase the speed at which we can um, validate new therapies and push them forward. Um, so I think that's a really powerful part of stem cells which sometimes um, is not apparent. Um, and I hope that has given you a little bit more insight into stem cell therapy as a whole, and I thank you for your attention. Would you like to, um, to comment on the potential safety issues around these stem cells? Yes, so as I was saying, you need to um, direct the cells towards the cell type you want. But if you start putting in cells that um, still keep that uh, ability to expand and grow and grow and grow, obviously you've got the risk they can do that in the person. So we need to really um, establish that the cells that we grow in the lab are uh, mature, they're adult, and they're not going to um, uh, grow and form... Um, um, clusters of cells that we don't want um, once we transplant them. Um, yeah. Answer your question. Yeah, so, so as Emma says, there is, there is a um, concern about uh, the potential for stem cells to uh, proliferate, to divide uncontrollably, and essentially that, can form, that could potentially form, of, form a form of tumour or cancer, and that's why um, we have to be very careful with the use of this technology. Um, so the cells that have been... Um, used for uh, the eye studies so far have undergone a very rigorous set of uh, studies and controls to make sure that their, their regenerative capacity is really very limited and that any risk of them producing tumours in the eye or elsewhere is really remote. Um, but it's an important consideration when it comes to this particular approach. Um, another great talk. So for the recent case that was in the press, fantastic, we talked about this this morning, um, of the uh, wet AMD uh, and the stem cell research, clearly we've established this morning that to go to the dry is going to be maybe 20 years, more than 20 years or something like that. Um, is there anywhere else in the world which is actually progressing that stem cell research for dry, not here in the UK, um, like in the States or Japan or somewhere? Is there some other parallel universe going on which is working on the dry? Um, I've heard the press favourite, but I believe um, the in the States there is a trial for AMD, dry AMD um, by um, Carter Therapeutics, but that is restricted to the States at yeah. present. Okay. Um, okay. So yes, uh, there are trials going on for, for dry AMD, um, including both um, Akata and also the Japanese trials for AMD. So the answer is yes, it's, it's ongoing. It, there are additional challenges for dry AMD because um, the rate of, of the, the speed of the disease is such that it will be some time before the benefit is really apparent. And that means that um, it's going to take some time before we can be confident about the results. Um, so this is one reason why we're choosing conditions um, which have a more rapid um, progression so that we can get a much more rapid um, outcome measure and that we can use iteratively to actually improve on the interventions. It's, it's important, um, thank you for the question, it's very important to emphasise that these first clinical applications, these first applications of the stem cells in people are safety studies. So the aim of the studies is not to demonstrate improvement in sight, but to find out whether the cells are safe, bearing in mind the safety concerns that we just discussed. Um, for that reason, um, most of the people involved in these trials um, have relatively little personally to benefit from their involvement. 
um, it's hoped that once we can be confident about the safety, then we can potentially apply the same strategy to people who have um, better sight, an earlier stage of their condition, um, but potentially would have more to lose from side effects. The, the um, stem cells have been used in humans with these conditions, um, but we don't yet know whether they benefit. Yes, indeed, that's right. So the main, the main aim of, the, of even that study is to find out whether um, the cells do harm. In fact, that study's been designed, as have, as have others, to, um, in such a way that there, there may be an indication of benefit as well. And that's why, actually, in that study, they've chosen to target wet AMD, whereas for the majority of indications, it's more likely to be of benefit for dry AMD. On the whole, these studies are currently addressing safety rather than benefit, but it's hoped that once we can be assured of the safety, then we can... Um, extend it to other studies to look at the potential value, potential benefit to people. Yes. Just out of interest, when you grow the um, stem cells, is there sort of an optimum time when they are at the correct amount of growth? For example, it matches up with, so say you make RPE cells, and you're implanting them into, say, a 40-year-old versus a 70-year-old, If there is it like a one-size-fits-all and the, the function matches up? Or it, like if you, I'm sure you know what I mean, but if you Im implant something that's, say, for a 40-year-old into a 70-year-old, is it, is it going to work too well? Or does it? do you have to match it up? Um, I think the important thing is, is they are functional, yes. Um, but we don't know what stage is going to be best, really, at this stage. Um, so obviously it's going to be very difficult to generate um, cells that are at adult stages. We'd have to grow them for that length of time in the dish. Um, so I think they are going to be, to be younger cells. Um, but then how young do they need to be? This Definitely for um, the light sensitive, the photoreceptors, this is a crucial question to us. At what stage is the best time to then take them to transplant them where they retain the abilities to go into the, the tissue that's already there and form connections as they would normally do during their normal development. Um, so actually that might be better to have younger cells. But even then, we've got the issue, the safety issues. You don't want them too young either because you want them to have stopped growing and dividing and have decided to become that, that type of cell. Um, so I think, yes, it, it needs further investigation as to which stage, but it will be an important criteria to know. Um, which cells to take um, and their developmental stage. Thank you. Any other questions for Emma? Very well, thank you for a great talk.